We're now going to move from project change models or frameworks into change diagnostic models. Again, using the same framework that we've used before, diagnostic models are really part of the overall project, in which case there are things that you do as part of the project. One of those things up front is diagnostics, determining what needs to change, what are the problems, particularly the core problem under the symptoms. Within this area, there's at least 10 different models that I would classify as diagnostics. The question then comes is why do diagnostics? Because too often, companies that go doing change don't do diagnostics. They end up treating the symptoms and never really get down to the core problem. This is the push down pop up theory of management. They push down one problem or symptom and the core problem pops up someplace else. So the key then is what to change, but also what to protect from change. Too often, even when diagnostics are done, the focus is on only those things that need to be changed without looking at the values and core operations that need to be protected from that change. Failure to protect certain parts of the operation often leads to unnecessary resistance that will come up later. So again, what to change, what to protect is the key deliverable from change diagnostics. Overview, and again, this is an overview. Some of these change models could require a full lecture or multiple lectures, in some cases even a whole course on the model to use it to the full extent. So going forward, McKinsey's 7S. This comes out of the McKinsey Consulting Group and is a very well-known diagnostic model. It looks at the organization from seven different perspectives. Strategy, structure, symptoms, shared values, skills, staff, and style. These are the seven S's that drive a whole series of questions that help the organization focus on what's working well, what's not working, and thereby laying the foundation of what needs to be changed. The Nadler and Tushman Organizational Congruence Model is another one that is frequently encountered in college courses. This looks at organizations from dynamics of how they operate internally and how they connect with the external environment. The focus is on the work itself, the work processes, the formal and informal information flows, and the people reactions and interrelationships across the organization. This looks at, again, the same thing that the McKinsey 7S looks at, but from different dimensions, different ways of looking at the same organization, thereby seeing it slightly different. The systems dynamics model. This is a extension of systems theory, looking at the interplay of parts of the organization. It's a dynamic nonlinear model. It looks at the parts but more importantly, it looks at the interconnectivity between those parts, such as what is the environment doing external to the organization, those impacts on the organization, the decision-making process and how it reacts to internal problems and external challenges, as well as competitive actions, in which case any action that one company makes is not gonna be done in isolation, there's going to be counteractions elsewhere in the industry. So this is looking at all those dynamics. Again, looking at what works, what's not working well. The Quinn's competing values model is a fourth way of looking at an organization. How managers think about the organization, what drives their actions, as well as what drives their perceptions of the need for change. Within this framework, there's four competing models, a human resource or a people point of view, 
and open systems. This comes from systems theory, but again, a non-boundary organization. The boundary around the organization is artificial. There's constant flows and product and information across that boundary. And it looks at those from a systems perspective. It looks at internal processes. This is material and service processes, as well as information processes and interrelationships between people in the organization. And fourth then, it adds an economic point of view, the value chain, how that is embedded within the other three systems. Again, what's working and what's not working. I'm gonna spend a little more time looking at the Cuneven model. It looks like Cinefin, but it's pronounced Cuneven or something similar to that. It's a very difficult word to pronounce in English and there's no direct translation in English. I'm using this because it really focuses on how we look at organizations and is probably one of the least known diagnostic models, but it helps you understand the problem that you are facing. Too often we think about living things in the simple model, in which case you can see what's happening, you can categorize it and respond with a best practice. This is the known environment. We know how to live and respond to those situations. Unfortunately, rarely, if ever, do we ever have a simple cause-effect relationship that is an isolation. In reality, we probably spend more time in the complicated or the knowable. We don't necessarily know the situation, but it can be learned. This is where we can sense the situation, analyze it in some detail, and then respond. This is not a best practice application, but a good practice. This is probably where we live most of our life, or we think we live most of our life. And 20, 30 years ago, this was the norm situation. Increasingly though, we live in the complex, in which case, we don't necessarily know a similar cause-effect relationship such as A drives B, which drives C, which drives D. In that case, A, B, C, D are all linear, all interconnected. That is complicated. In a complex, there's non-linearity, in which case you may have A, B, C, D driving, but B also has a feedback loop to A, and D may have a feedback loop to A and B, in which case it becomes complex and that the cause-effect relationships are really intermingled themselves. Therefore, you can't necessarily predict what's happening. Those feedback loops happen at different time scales. This is not a good practice. It is far from a best practice situation. This is an emergent practice. You need to discover what works. Instead of sensing, you have to probe the system. You test things in the system and you see what happens. This is the probe, sense, and then you react or respond, such that you never really know exactly what to do. You have to try different things. This is where we spend most of our life in the world today, trying to come up with emergent or novel practices and to the extent that we're able to get it to somewhat of a focused understanding, we could then move that part of the practice to complicated in our change response. The fourth domain is the chaotic. This is chaos as you would expect the term to be used. It's turbulent. It's not possible to see patterns. There is no pattern or the pattern is so hidden in the detail that you don't know what to do. This is where you just have to try something, anything. You have to act. You have no idea what to do. You act, see what happens, and then you respond. The hope is that you're able to get some control over the chaos and move it into a complex where you see the patterns and then move it into the complicated. The reason I focus on this diagnostic model is that too often we treat change as a simple or a known process, in which case we're solving an easy to solve problem. In reality, we're solving a symptom of a 
complicated or complex problem. So the category here is key of what type of problem are you trying to solve and then using the appropriate diagnostic tools and change response. The chaotic is just realizing that you're out of control and you've got to get at least into the complex or complicated arena to even have any semblance of what to do. So again, these are simple, complicated, complex, chaotic, different ways of categorizing the problem and the environment that you're living in at that particular point in time. So what model of diagnostic should you use? Unlike the project methodology where any one would work well for you, and my recommendation is that you try to use a little bit of all of them. So the key then is which model should you use? Too often, change managers use none. They jump to the first solution that is either feasible or politically acceptable to them, and they end up solving symptoms, not the core problem itself. Best of all, though, is I recommend using all of them. It may take a little bit extra time, but that time spent up front gives you a much better understanding of what is working, what is not working within the organization, and it helps you get beneath the symptoms by using different change diagnostics, you're looking at the organization. You're forced to look at organizations differently, and that is new knowledge that will help you craft the change objective of what needs to change and how to approach that change process. Moving forward then, what to change, what to protect from change. That's the key part you're trying to determine in change diagnostics.